Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Hello again, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us here at KAKM for Friday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting this evening's show. Looking at the satellite imagery, uh, low pressure started out pretty intense this morning, but weakening throughout the day. So those uh, strong gusty winds, uh, high wind advisories are dropped now and the winds coming down to about 15 to 30 miles an hour this afternoon from the Perloffs up through the across St. Lawrence Island and in across the Bering Strait coast. The high surf advisories up in this area have also expired now and are no longer in effect for any of the areas up there. Otherwise, a lot of cloudiness here coming northward, uh, front kind of pushing inland over the area with uh, rain across south central Alaska, moderate rain now at Kodiak Island back along the Alaska Peninsula. Kind of a break here over the southwest interior areas and basically dry, but some areas of fog over Bristol Bay, but some more moisture will move on up into that area tonight. Farther to the east, uh, some areas of rain or precipitation over the Copper River Basin. And then we had some snow extending northward from about the Susitna Valley, right up uh, across the western Tanana Valley into the Koyukuk there. And that began to mix in and change over to rain during the afternoon hours, uh, both at Talkeetna and at Tanana, but still snowing up at Bettles. Otherwise, uh, the dark area here, that's high pressure and clear skies are mostly clear skies there along the southeast coast with uh, temperatures well into the 50s to even the lower 60s over the southern areas and then some uh, cloudiness up over the north slope back out to the west uh, kind of some partial clearing going on out over the Aleutians there westerly winds out in that area about uh, 15 to 25 miles per hour across Adak and Atka but also some uh, breaks in the sky there some partly sunny skies at Atka and then uh, shimmy right on the edge of the next uh, frontal system, right on the edge of the clouds of the next system that's back toward the Komodorsky Islands. Looking on the chart today, about uh, earlier today, this is the position of the front with the uh, snow on up to the north, the rain to the south, and then uh, some rain back along the Alaska Peninsula. Another trough right through this area bringing more rain and fog in across the eastern and southeastern Bering Sea with uh, rainfall amounts uh, pretty significant across the Seward Peninsula. Both uh, Wales and Nome picking up about three quarters of an inch of rain. Otherwise, uh, about a quarter to up to a half an inch here over much of the southwest interior, even heavier up along the Alaska Range closer into the front where Farewell had about eight tenths of an inch of rain. Those are all 24 hour amounts ending at 4 p.m. this afternoon. And again, the rain from Kodiak Island right up into south central Alaska, more showery and lighter back over the Copper River Basin where Along the Copper River, winds southerly 15 to 25 miles per hour, and then the sunshine down here over the southeast coast with a rather large area of high pressure over the Gulf of Alaska and up over the Yukon. Forecast for tonight, again, more rain spreads into Bristol Bay. Rain develops this evening over south central Alaska, becomes a little more widespread and heavier, and that'll extend back across Kodiak Island. Much of the southwest interior looking uh, wet tonight, more showery conditions back along the southwest coast out toward the Perbloffs and up to St. Lawrence Island. Scattered rain and snow showers up over the northwest interior in the Arctic coast, north slope right down to the Brooks Range. Uh, looking cloudy with a chance of some scattered snow showers up in that area. Maybe a few breaks here over the northeast interior and mostly fair down over the Panhandle. Uh, partly, or partly cloudy skies to maybe some areas of mostly cloudy, but it'll be dry winds. Those northwesterlies uh, should begin to diminish a little bit over the southern areas and remain light up to the north. Out to the west, there's that next front coming across the western Aleutian areas with a band of rain and uh, not too strong on the winds. The main low center up there in the Russian Far East. This original low really weakened now and hanging back, actually pulling back to the west-northwest there with, again, that shower area with the trough extending down in toward the Pribilof Islands, but should be dry for the Alaska Peninsula and the eastern Aleutians during the overnight hours tonight. 
And then for tomorrow, this front uh, really weakens, but still some moisture left behind. And as the upper trough moves across southern Alaska, so it looks like rain, south central Alaska, back to about the Alaska range here, and then back to the west, more showery conditions. And actually, uh, the rain will begin to become more showery and less uh, or more intermittent here across south central Alaska in the later afternoon hours, but periods of rain for the North Gulf Coast into Prince William Sound, showers up over the Copper River Basin, and another sunny day, mostly sunny day, there across the southeast coast as high pressure holds both uh, tomorrow and through Sunday, so a great weekend coming up in that area. Up to the north uh, and the northeast, an area of rain and snow from roughly about the Tanana Valley up across the upper Yukon there to near the Brooks Range few flurries possible or isolated snow showers along the Arctic coast with mostly cloudy skies there. Scattered rain and snow showers across the northwest interior in the Seward Peninsula. Showers pretty likely here across the southwest and then a break off the coast there and the next front uh, bringing rain um, into the central Aleutians approaching the Perbolofs and doesn't quite make it. Uh, you'll be right on the edge of the precipitation, but definitely see a good increase in those southerly winds up to 30 knots in the forecast for the Perbolofs on Sunday and uh, pretty brisk southwest winds. Uh, small craft advisors right up into the Bering Strait on Sunday as uh, association with this trough that'll bring rain back in from Kotzebue Sound across the Seward Peninsula. So pretty wet Sunday shaping up for areas here in the west down to the Yukon Delta. Just uh, cloudy skies, high pressure, light winds, mostly cloudy, still a risk of a shower here over the Kenai Peninsula and maybe the Chugach, but much drier conditions in over south central Alaska, really all of southern Alaska. Look for some partly sunny skies over the Copper River Basin but uh, cloudy but dry over the Kuskokum Valley. Scattered rain and snow showers from the Tanana Valley up toward the Yukon. And again, uh, cloudy with a chance of snow showers up along the Arctic coastal areas. And the Panhandle looking dry. There'll be some variable clouds. Could be a mostly cloudy day with a chance of showers there from Sitka to Port Alexander. That's just a slight chance though. It will be basically another dry day there with some good sunshine over portions of the southeast coast. And also look for some clearing here from Kodiak Island down across the Alaska Peninsula areas. And for temperatures today, kind of a range here in the 40s up over the northern Panhandle to 50s there, 55 at Klawak. Annette had 60 this afternoon, 53 in Sitka. Yakutat was 48 degrees and Cordova at 39, 36 degrees in Valdez, 42 at Seward, Homer up to 49, 50 down at Kodiak, mostly in the mid to upper 40s for Cook Inlet, but uh, Talkeetna, snow most of the day, changing over to rain this afternoon. They had 34 degrees at uh, 3 p.m., 37 over at Gulcana and 34 both at Northway and Delta, about the same in Fairbanks over to Tanana there, and uh, staying below freezing a little bit here for Bettles and Fort Yukon in the 20s to the Brooks Range, Anatovic uh, coming in with 27 degrees up to the north along the coast, uh, upper 20s to lower 30s, uh, pretty much uh, the rule there along the Arctic coast with milder conditions back to the west, upper 30s there, uh, Kotzebue 37 degrees, Nome 44, 46 at Gullivan, and again, the rain in 41, but winds diminishing there at Wales as well as over St. Lawrence Island with temperatures in the mid 40s. Back over the southwest interior, McGrath had 48, Sleep Mute 52, 52 also at Macoriuk, otherwise upper 40s here over the Yukon and Kuskokwim Deltas. And out uh, to the west, 50 both at St. Paul and St. George and some sunshine, Atka up to 57 this afternoon, but a little bit of fog keeping Shimia down to 52. 57 also in Unalaska, upper 40s, mostly in the lower to mid 50s here for the Alaska Peninsula, but cold Bay stuck at 49 degrees and uh, mid 50s up into Bristol Bay, both at King Salmon and at Pilot Point. Lows for tonight, uh, lower to mid 30s over the northern panhandle, upper 30s to mid 40s down to the south and 30s to near 40 here across the North Gulf Coast and South Central Alaska, Copper River Basin, uh, upper 20s to lower 30s and down to uh, near 20 there at Eagle and uh, Northway. Otherwise, the central and western Tanana Valley in the lower 30s, upper 20s over the northeast interior, mid to upper 20s for the central and eastern Arctic coast with lower to mid 30s here back to the west, lower 30s across the Noatak, Selawik Valley areas over to about Ambler, and uh, staying pretty mild there, southern coast of the Seward Peninsula, Nome forecast low of 40 degrees 
Lower 40s here for over the southwest interior, but milder mid to upper 40s over Bristol Bay, upper 40s over the Alaska Peninsula, all the way out to Shimia. And for the highs tomorrow in the 50s for the Aleutians and the Alaska Peninsula in the lower 50s, upper 40s to lower 50s over the southwest interior, upper 40s there on the southern Seward Peninsula, but upper 30s to near 40 over the northwest, uh, but pretty mild there. Point Hope forecast high 45 degrees and all of the Arctic coast forecast to rise at least above freezing there, but not much more than the mid 30s, upper or mid 20s there over the eastern north slope and then 30s to lower 40s here over the east central interior areas. Taking a look at flying weather, a good VFR here for all of the Panhandle up into the Copper River Basin, an area of marginal VFR, that moisture from about the Tanana Valley up across the upper Yukon there. Marginal VFR in the forecast for the North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound area over to about Seward, but uh, becoming VFR for the Western Alaska Range, Cook Inlet and the Susitna Valley. Trending VFR throughout the afternoon. That'll extend down to Kodiak Island. Got some marginal VFR here along the southwest coast, an area from the northern Kuskokwim Valley back up across the uh, lower Koyukuk, Kobuk Valley areas out to the western Arctic coast. And then with the uh, next front bringing some IFR in toward the central Aleutians and some more IFR back out to the southwest. But uh, VFR. Here for the eastern Aleutians, uh, much of Bristol Bay and the Alaska Peninsula, also up over the northern Bering Sea. Passes shaping up like this. Anatovic VFR, but could be some marginal VFR on the southern approach. That same forecast for Adigan as well. VFR, but watch for some lower conditions on the southern entrance. Lake Clark and Merrill starting out IFR, becoming VFR in the afternoon. And for rainy, an improving trend there as well, but probably holding marginal into the afternoon hours. And for windy, marginal VFR. And Isabel looking VFR tomorrow. Same forecast from Intasta. VFR in the forecast. Tanita starting out marginal, becoming VFR throughout the morning. And for Portage, marginal VFR the entire day. Chilkoot and White, VFR both tomorrow and probably Sunday as well. Taking a look at the freezing levels, quite a gradient here over the southeast coast, uh, starting out about 4,000 feet there near Skagway to 10 to 12,000 feet down over Dixon Entrance, and then uh, kind of spreading out quite a bit, 2,000 feet up over the Brooks Range area, 4,000 feet here across northern Cook Inlet, but uh, 4,000 feet all the way up to the north there across the northwest interior, 6,000 feet back down toward the Alaska Peninsula and icing above about 4,000 feet, light to isolated moderate rime here in the Gulf of Alaska, up in across South Central Alaska, and portions of the Copper River Basin back to maybe into the northern Kuskokwim Valley. Icing free over the Panhandle, more icing possibilities up here from uh, say the Tanana Valley, up where that rain and snow area is across the upper Yukon, maybe as far west as the Koyukuk Valley, otherwise icing free through much of the interior, and then a band, narrow band of icing out here to the west, uh, staying to the west of the Pribilofs and beginning to drag across the central Aleutians, mostly above about 7,000 feet. And the winds aloft uh, showing the trough coming across southern Alaska tomorrow, so that's gonna keep rain in the forecast, becoming more showery behind that, and then as this next system approaches from the west on Sunday and Monday, higher pressure should build here over the southwest interior and move in over south central Alaska and uh, make for drier conditions that probably will last several days. And at 9,000 feet, uh, southwest flow pretty dominant here, 20 to 30 knots out over the southern Bering Sea and the Aleutians, right up into the interior, 25 to 30 knot winds at this elevation all the way across the Copper River Basin. High pressure off the southeast coast for light wind conditions, possibly up to 25 knots there across the Queen Charlottes. Light winds for the most part up along the Arctic coast, but uh, southerlies to southwesterlies here across the Chukchi Sea at about 20 knots. And the eastern coast there could see some westerlies at about the same speed. 3,000 foot winds, uh, 20 to 30 knot southwest flow here coming across the Bering Sea taking more of a northeast direction over the interior at about 15 to 20 knots in most areas there. And along the Arctic coast, variable to westerlies at about 10 to 15 knots. Lighter winds for the North Gulf Coast areas, just 10 knots from the southwest, and some pretty light winds again along the panhandle with high pressure off the coast, kind of northwesterlies there along the south coast with lighter, more variable conditions up to the north. And taking a look at turbulence, 
uh, maybe an area of light isolated moderate chop here along the northwest coast down in toward uh, Kotzebue and maybe Selawake and also an area here west of the Alaska Range over the Kuskokwim Valley. Another area of light isolated moderate chop possible here along the southwest coast, but really nothing too significant in the way of turbulence across the mainland areas or the panhandle. And the next area way out here to the west, that beginning to spread in toward the western Aleutians uh, tomorrow afternoon, but all the moderate will stay back to the west and north at least through tomorrow. And after the break, hangar flying, I'll be back with a look at the marine forecasts. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mary O'Connor with the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation and the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health. Thanks to Alaska Public Media for having us, and thanks to our viewers for watching Hangar Flying. This evening, we are happy to have as our guest, Kyle Moeller. Kyle is a PhD student at Tulane University in New Orleans. He is also an intern with the Aviation Safety Program at the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health in Anchorage. Welcome to Hangar Flying, Kyle. Thanks for having me. So can you get started by telling us a little bit about your background in aviation and what are you doing here in Anchorage? Uh, well, my background in aviation is fairly limited. Um, I came up here as an intern in the aviation safety program, um, but previously my uh, experience is in environmental health. Um, so while as an intern, um, I was put through ground school and um, it kind of caught me up to speed with pilot lingo and just understanding the world of pilots and uh, I've gone out to several hubs to um, get to see what it's like out in bush flying Alaska and uh, so I, while I don't fly now I, I think I have a good understanding of, of the operations here. Did you get to take a flight and see exactly what types <laughs> of flying they're doing? I did yes I, uh, I went out to Stevens Village and Beaver I believe um, and it was a I, I didn't realize we would just land where I didn't see any buildings whatsoever. And so that, that opened my eyes and four wheelers met us and uh, it was a good experience. Great, great. That's very typical in rural <laughs> Alaska. So um, let's talk about um, some of the studies that you've been doing and um, what types of research you've been doing this summer. Okay, yeah. Um, so this summer I came in and um, a fatigue prevention program had already been implemented, um, so it was, it's to train pilots on fatigue. And um, I've been developing the student training guide for that to um, hopefully supplement the training um, program. And so I've been doing that, and that's kind of a short-term project. Um, I've done a longer-term project looking at uh, oil and gas helicopters, uh, so the helicopters that are servicing the oil and gas industry in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, building a database there looking at uh, fatal and serious injury um, accidents. And the, the project that I'm here to talk to you about today is a mid-air collision um, project. So I don't know if I should go into depth on that now or if you'd sure. like to. Sure. Uh, uh, tell us what did, what did you look at? So we looked at uh, just basically um, the mid-air collisions that have occurred since 1983 until 2014. So um, in 2011 there were three um, pretty there were three mid-air collisions and uh, that kind of got everybody thinking that they were on the rise and so we thought we wanted to look um, and see if that was actually occurring and we found that it's actually the opposite it um, they've been decreasing by 73 percent since 1983. Wow yeah. and you looked at mid-air collisions just in Alaska? Yes just in Alaska well so I did the, the research on the mid-air collisions in Alaska and I compared my research to national data, but the national data only had um, the data over 1983 to 2000. So I then compared those two time periods. And is Alaska significantly worse or better? Well, uh, so Alaska accounts for about 6% of the mid-air collisions and fatalities um, nationally over that time period, but Alaska only had about 2.5% of the airplanes flying. Um, so it would appear that we're overrepresented up here. And what other types of things did you look at, maybe um, to explain some of why the reasons why we might be overrepresented? Uh, yeah. Okay. So well, first we wanted to look at the weather, um, see if that was a cause, and that wasn't. In 100% of the crashes, both nationally and in Alaska, they were all in VFR conditions. Um, 
So then next we wanted to see if it was just um, possibly pilot um, experience that was an, an issue. Um, that doesn't appear to be the, the cause either. Uh, so 65% of the pilots held at least a commercial airline uh, or commercial certificate. So it's 35% commercial and 27% were ATP. Um, and only 3.5% were student pilots who were involved in mid-air collisions here. Wow. Also, 74% um, of the, the pilots had greater than 1,000 hours of flying. So we're not talking about uh, real ex inexperienced pilots who are going out and are focusing just maybe on the instrument panel? No, there were a few of those out there, it seems, but um, the, the least amount of hours were 26. But for the most part, it's your seasoned pilot out there. Wow. So we are running out of time. This is really interesting, Kyle. We're running out of time, um, but we're going to have you back on the show, and we'll look forward to hearing more about your research on mid-air collisions and uh, maybe get some recommendations. Thanks Great. for being with us, Kyle. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoy learning about events and happenings in aviation in Alaska, please consider becoming a member of the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation. Your support helps us bring you news and information. Ladies and gentlemen, please tune in to our next show when we talk to Kyle about the research that he's doing on mid-air collisions. Until next time, fly safely. Today's sea ice analysis uh, looks like this, the ice edge back up through this area, and uh, looks like uh, over the next five days, the ice edge up here will advance to the southwest or expand southwestward up to 20 nautical miles. That's through Wednesday. And back to the east here across the Beaufort Sea, it looks like colder air is going to drop into that area late in the weekend or late Sunday and uh, into first of next week. So this area through here and the area through here probably will start uh, filling in with some new and young ice areas. That'll be Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, the way it looks at this time. For the uh, winds here, look for northerlies up to 20 knots for Clarence Strait tomorrow. Season about four feet. Stevens Passage, the opposite direction there at about 15. Northwest 15 for uh, Lynn Canal. Northerlies at about 20 knots still for the southern coast and then lighter, more southwest up to the north. And for Sunday, southeasterlies 15 to 20 knots here for the north coast and the extreme south coast northerlies roughly at about 20 knots with five foot seas. And Clarence Strait northerlies at 20 knots uh, with four foot seas staying from the south here for Stevens Passage up across and through Lynn Canal looking at 15 knot winds there with seas running at about three feet. And uh, for the North Gulf Coast, southerly winds at 20 knots with seas 7 to 8 feet. Southeast 20 for Prince William Sound with 4 foot seas. That same forecast good for Northern Cook Inlet. Southerly winds uh, from Southern Cook Inlet right down across Shelikoff Strait at 20 knots and the east side of Kodiak Island up across the Barren. Same speed and direction with seas running 8 to 10 feet through those areas. And the outlook for Sunday, winds becoming quite light and variable. Again, high pressure building over the area. Not much of a pressure gradient at all. So light variable winds at about 10 knots here from Cook Inlet all the way down across Shelikoff Strait. Also in the North Gulf Coast to the Western Gulf Coast areas, light variable winds. Northwest on the light side for Prince William Sound with just two foot seas. The North Gulf Coast northerly is at about 15 knots with seas up to six feet. And for Bristol Bay on Saturday, southwest at about 15, westerlies 15 knots for the Alaska Peninsula. And from Sitkanak southwestward, southwesterlies at about 20 knots with the seas 8 to 9 feet through these areas and about 4 to 6 feet up here. For Sunday, uh, light variable winds there from Sitkanak all the way over to uh, Cape Sarachev. And then for the northern Seward Peninsula, southerlies at about 15 knots light westerly winds with four foot seas for Bristol Bay. Out to the west over the eastern Aleutians, west to southwest, 10 to 15 knots with seas seven to nine feet there again for the eastern Aleutians. Adak and Atka, central areas there, southwesterlies at about 20 knots and then southwest 25 knots, small craft advisory winds there for the western zones. And then those uh, pick up uh, considerably on Sunday with a little bit stronger frontal boundary coming in 
tighter gradient. So we got gales here for the central Aleutians from the south southwest. Minimum gales, 35 knots, seas 8 to 11 feet. Westerly small craft advisories behind the front. And for the Fox Islands, eastern Aleutians, southerly is 20 to 30 knots, uh, or south southwesterly is 20 to 30 knots with seas 7 to 9 feet. Up along the southwest coast, west to southwest at about 20 knots. Southerly is 20 knots for the northern Bering Sea and St. Lawrence Island. Light westerly is there for the Perbolofs. And then those increase significantly on Sunday. 30 knots southerly is here. Small craft advisories in all the zones along the southwest coast right up to St. Lawrence Island. For the uh, Arctic coast, uh, kind of light and variable there on the east side. Easterly, or wet, yeah, easterlies at 10 knots, increasing to 15 knots here for the western Arctic coast. And then Wales all the way up to Cape Beaufort, southeast at 20 knots with four foot seas. Taking a look at Sunday, got some small craft advisories here from uh, Wales up to Cape Thompson. And then 20 knot winds up along the western Arctic coast, becoming easterly there. Uh, through this area. Easterlies, the entire stretch of the coastline all the way to demarcation point, but diminishing down to 10 knots. Looking at tonight's weather again, big area of rain here from the southwest interior. Rain, Kodiak Island right up into south central Alaska and the North Gulf Coast staying wet. Fair over the panhandle. Uh, drier up over the northeast interior with uh, some scattered snow showers along the Arctic coast. And then for uh, Saturday, still wet here over southern Alaska, and then some rain or snow up over the northeast interior. More showery conditions back to the west. Another mostly sunny day there for the southeast coast. And then that front tuck bringing some rain across the uh, central Aleutians, but a stronger system or becomes tighter grading here with those winds and rain advancing almost to the Pribilofs, but gusty winds and rain up across the western coastal areas. High pressure, light winds, and partly sunny skies for southern Alaska. Have a great evening and a nice weekend. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.